Wow, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the joy in the house. We thank you for your presence that is clearly here. Um, I want to pray that as we get into this session, Father, that even as our hosts have cautioned us, that our hearts will be ready as we've prayed, as we've sung, Lord, that will not settle for what we know, but will be able to grapple and contend with uh, anything that you're inviting us into. Indeed, I do pray for the power of, uh, you know, wisdom and revelation, that the eyes of our hearts, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the inheritance that is there in your saints. And so I praise you and honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. And all of us said, yeah. all of us shouted, yeah. amen and amen. Can you just celebrate the Lord as you have your seats? Wow. 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 Welcome to Gathering 2023, the Feb Gathering. Can you just celebrate the Lord for being here? I truly do honor God and appreciate that all of us are gathered here today. Um, as you heard, my name is Kevin Kilonzi, married to One Faith Kilonzi. Um, yeah, uh, we get to lead the downtown network together and uh, the, the youth ministries. Uh, can we just appreciate Pastor Moridi and Pastor Caro who are here, guys? Come on, come on, guys, come on, guys. Yes, what a wonderful couple that God has given us to lead us uh, uh, um, and, and, you know, oversee us uh, as a movement, fathers over us as a community. Um, you know, the reason why I'm, I really wondered, you know, why am I speaking, why am I starting? And the only reason I could finally land on is because I have a father and I have a mother. Come on, somebody. Yes, it's true. It's true, you know, uh, and so I do celebrate the Lord for you guys. Thank you for loving Pastor Faith and I. Thank you for taking us under your wings, guiding us as your own children, speaking into us, and not just us, but everyone in this community, and we do appreciate you guys for that. Can you also just shout out for the executive pastors, the people who lead the different networks, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I do celebrate you guys. Uh, these guys have become like brothers and sisters to me. Uh, I enjoy serving with them. I truly believe that any of them could be here uh, to, uh, to share with us today. Uh, and so even as I, uh, I do this, I'm truly sure that all of them are cheering me on. Come on, Pastor Kilonzi. Yeah, I'm sure they are cheering me on. I know they have my back, yeah? Yeah, I know Pastor Victor, Mudembo, and Zedi have my back. Yeah, Pastor Milton, Jumba, and Vivian, come on. Yeah, yeah. I know Pastor Godwin and Noel have my back. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Sheila and Albu, yeah. Pastor Angie is not here. I'm sure they have my back. Pastor James and Dorcas. For these ones, I'm sure on one hand they have my back. On the other one, they have a knife. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. They don't have a knife. They have a machete. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And so, uh, we're going to be having an amazing time today. I hope I pray. Um... And so if you, if you uh, I want you to engage, yeah? I want you to engage, but also, I don't want you to engage as a stranger, because maybe you're not, you know, you're not part of Mavuno Hill City, and so you may think in your head that you've come to Hill City. No, you've come to the movement headquarters, and you belong. Amen? Yeah, you belong. And so, and so respond, engage. You are a child of this house. This is your home. This is your family. Uh, let's have fun in the Lord's house, yeah? Uh, it's like one of those family gatherings. So let's be ready to enjoy. Let's be ready to engage uh, in every possible uh, way. Uh, uh, I'll be talking about the blessing of sonship. The blessing of sonship. Somebody say or something. Yeah. Um, and of course, when I say sonship, I mean uh, daughters as well. I think it's good for me to bring that out early so that you're not scatting around the issue. <laughs> and so, just so that no one is excluded, yeah, so uh, uh, that, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, um, and so, we're going to begin 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, 2 Timothy 2, 1. It says, now, if you see any yellow part in scriptures, we will be reading that together with you. Sawa, sawa. All right, sawa, sawa means, uh, are we together, all right? <laughs> Something like that. So, you then, so who's speaking, who's writing? Oh, who's my son? All right, so you then be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, I joined Mavuno downtown uh, almost by mistake. I did not plan to join the church. It was, it, it was what happened is that um, um, my, my sister used to go to Mavuno downtown 
Back in the day, they used to meet at, at, uh, in one of the buildings in town called KICC. There's a restaurant there called Tin Tin. So they used to meet there. And so he says, you know, I ask her for money. She says, come over to our church. I'm going to help you. So I go to the church. I'm like, first of all, these guys are too happy to be a church. So I sat at the back. Like, which church can be this happy? You know, my sister lives on the edge. If you know my sister, she lives on the edge. So I was like, well, maybe she's joined a cult. But, you know, if she gives me money every week, you know, knock yourself. <laughs> and so every Sunday she'd invite me uh, to go to church and, and she'd give me some money. By this time I was a college student, uh, uh, by definition broke. <laughs> and so I really needed the money. And so one day I remember I would come literally, uh, they, they had these barricades but they were perforated, but yeah, that, that would distinguish between the church and the restaurant. So it's sit on the restaurant side. Then one day they were doing a sermon series called The Rat Race. Shy. <laughs> It was an amazing series, it was a money series. And I remember for once, I actually moved from the, uh, from the restaurant side and came into the church side. Uh, uh, pastor Kema, uh, at this point, was a, was a campus pastor, uh, introduced me to Pastor BX. Later on, I got to know Pastor Kuria. Uh, uh, and then within a semester or so, Pastor Kema said, I'd like to visit you because we, we had just started bringing students. I couldn't stop bringing students from our college. Like, guys, come and see something I've never seen. Like, you know, like, it was epic. So I'd come with guys. So one day, Pastor Kema says, can I come and visit you guys? And we're like, it's okay because uh, he promised to come with pizza. I was like, you know, we can't say no to that. They come and visit us and they come with some Discovery students. Discovery is our leadership development program. Everyone should do discovery. Hey! Hey! Everyone should do discovery. Anyway, they come over uh, and we are having this conversation. First of all, two things I discovered on that day. Number one is that pizza is a discipleship tool. Uh, like a serious one. But then number two, I also, that's also the day I decided that I'll do discovery when I'm done with college. Like I was a second year student, but I said, this thing, I'll do it. I didn't even, I was like, if pastors come, come with pizza, what do they eat in their house? <laughs> so I was like, I'll do this thing. Lo and behold, kidding. But I said, I'll do this thing. But so I was, I was you know, getting acquainted with Pastor Kiyama, uh, becoming their friends. Uh, uh, but uh, I would come to Al church to way early and then I would leave way late. I was leading a group of students at university at this point. I wasn't spiritual. That's not why I was coming early. It's, it, well, the bus fare was cheaper on both sides. Like in the morning it's cheaper, in the afternoon it's cheaper. So pastors would see me hanging around, set up, set up, set down team. Ah, all right. But you know, I was just, uh, that's what we were doing. By the time I was in fourth year, uh, uh, something had shifted between my relationship with Pastor Kiyama. He had moved from just being a pastor. He had sort of taken a fathering role over me. And I remember one day we were praying uh, and I shared a prayer item I had. I didn't have school fees for, for my fourth year. Uh, and, and I think I shared like on a Tuesday. By the next week on Tuesday, he came with a check that cleared 50% of my first semester school fees. Yeah. Something had shifted between our relationship and, and I didn't use the term father, but he had a fathering role over me. I remember he was the first person who called me to his office and said uh, that you'll have an upfront ministry. I didn't know it was this upfront, like upfront, upfront. And so he's the one first person who spoke that over my life. Uh, uh, um, spoke a teaching, a speaking gift over me. I had a still, you know, I had a heavy accent, still do. Uh, <laughs> kind of timid. Uh, but he spoke that over my life. I couldn't see it honestly. I remember at some point someone asking me, can you preach? I was like, I don't think I can preach, but I think I can do a good job of introducing the preacher, you know. Uh, but he spoke that into my life. And then Pastor Kiyama moved at that time, Mavuno downtown, was sort of autonomous, but we now so were working closely with Mavuno. Uh, Hill City, uh, let me call it that way, but it was back in the day at Bellevue. And so he handed over the leadership of the downtown campus to Pastor BX. Now, Pastor BX, hey, you guy, he took me again as his son. He and his wife, Becky, somehow just loved on us uh, with my wife. Uh, uh, back then, she was my girlfriend, but they, they just loved us. Uh, oh, yes. Hey. You know, guys, I don't usually speak about congregants like this, but there's a lady who led prayers. Hey! Whoever is married to that woman is blessed. In fact, if that person was speaking, I would listen to them. Because how can you be hanging out with angels in your house just like that? Wisdom coming from the... Hey. When the Lord says that he has ordained praise from the mouths of babes, I didn't know he meant this one. Hey! Hey! Where was I? I was with Pastor BX. So... <laughs> And, you know, at this point, I was, uh, I joined, I joined internship. 
And so Pastor BX affirmed me. I remember the first time I had to do a staff evaluation. Um, so what we do here is uh, we have these goals that you've agreed with. So you evaluate yourself first and then you send it to the, your supervisor who now gives you the evaluation. So I'd really scold myself lowly. Um, but then when we sat down for him to evaluate me, everything that I had scored myself lowly, he said, but you do this. So he started, I started knowing the things that I was doing and what they meant. Yeah. Uh, and so he said, but why would you score yourself this way? But I've seen you do this, this. Oh, yeah. So he, he brought into my attention the things that I was doing without knowing I was doing. I was calling out something that was already in me, but I wasn't aware of. Again, without using the term father, he had taken up a fathering role over me. And Pastor BX, he took me everywhere. You guys, there's a day we did. Oh, eh, oh, thank you. Life when, if you guys don't want to listen, I'll preach to the Life when Network. In fact, let me come over here. Okay, the guys, the idea, eh? I also don't want to go there. The idea, <laughs> the idea is if I say, you guys don't want to listen to me, I'm going to preach. You guys, you say, come over, and then you say, don't go, come, you, are you here together? Like, I have an esteem issue, so the idea <laughs> is you help me. If I say, you guys are not listening, I'll preach to these ones. You guys say, come, you guys say, don't go. If I say they don't want to listen, you ask who, where, why, and then you guys say they are not here. Am I? Are we together? You guys don't want to listen. Let me preach to the Lifeway Network. I I come. All right. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Anyway, <laughs> how many hours do I have for preaching? <laughs> There's a day we did shopping and did four bags of shopping, and we went around with Pastor BX visiting families. So I knew how to speak to families. I was an intern by this time, but I knew how to visit a family. Bef right now we do something called visitation. We were doing it before I knew the name of what we were doing uh, with Pastor BX. Again, Pastor BX was about to go to school, um, and so he handed over the leadership of the downtown campus to Pastor Kevin Derito, an amazing military-style, well-organized gentleman. You guys, at that point, we were with Pastor Osai in the staff team. Way, 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 way. Pastor Kevin Derito gave us our first job descriptions, you guys. And then he went to the States, you know. So we would op come to the office. And yes, he said, don't call me. I know the work I've given you is so much. So I'll allow you a five-minute call every week just to catch up. <laughs> you guys. We, he would go. We would open our, our laptop. Sorry, our laptops, Pastor Osai, myself, Pastor Koi. We'd open our laptops, see our job descriptions, stare at them. I'm not kidding. And then we'd close and go for lunch. Then <laughs> we'd come back, and then all of us were like, do you think Pastor Kevin actually wants, I think he's given us such big job descriptions because he wants to, for us to fail, then he can say, yo, you know, maybe go to another campus. That can be. <laughs> like, that was in our heads. Do you know, like, it, that's, that's, that's what I felt. By the end of the year, he had worked with us so well, every one of us had hit a goal in those job descriptions. Mine was to start campus trend and grow it to 250. We reached 400. I'm and, then, and then he's the first person who started calling me Pastor Kilonzi. I was always Kevo, you know, you that guy. But Pastor Kilonzi, somehow he had, he had shown me another side of a father that calls you to greatness. And without knowing, he had become uh, a father to me. He used to say that I'm his right hand man. I'm like, brother, I, I, no, brother, what? No, sir, I'm not even worthy to be your left pinky. Now you're calling me your right-hand man. <laughs> what a shock. Hey, Pastor Kevin really helped us. I used to be afraid of him at the beginning, yeah? Uh, I, in fact, I, I remember he would call me. Thanks you. Thank you so much, Simon. I remember he would used to call me, uh, and, and I would I'd be like, babe, quiet. Everyone, quiet. Like, don't breathe. <laughs> Hi, Pastor Kev. <laughs> For it, and I would actually stand up to pick his call. Like, I was that afraid of the man. Um... Woe to me if he calls me when I'm asleep. You guys, I would wake up. You know how you're heavy, your tongue is heavy? I would wake up and do <laughs> so that I can loosen up and then say, hi, Pastor Kevin. Like, you know, I was like that. But then he loved us. He called us to greatness, uh, showed us things we couldn't do. Earlier on, way before I planted a church, uh, uh, or we planted a church rather, Lifeway, uh, he, yes, Pastor Kevin would invite me to campus pastor's meeting. And say, just sit there and listen. I want you to know how we think. And then once we planted the church, he started saying, I want to invite, I, I, I can see you sitting at the executive pastor's table. And Pastor Kevin would say that to every staff member. And you'd actually believe it. And, and you'd walk with you in such a way that you actually 
for yourself, you know that's your level. Do you know that's your level? You cannot serve any less because that's what he's calling you uh, into. And so one day, I remember <laughs> we're, we're leading life we're at this point. Um, <laughs> and then um, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor M comes to visit Movuno Lifeway. Uh, that day, I left home. I'd want a shirt, you know, trousers, blah, blah, blah. But I, I had forgotten my belt, you know. And so, <laughs> and so I was like, ah, you know, young church, so I'd untucked. And then Pastor M used to have like another blue car, yeah? I see Blue Lantern over there coming down. I was like, I was so scared. I ran to the office. I called my boy, Paul. Um, we go to the office and tell him, uh, remove your belt. <laughs> so he's like, what? I'm like, remove your belt, Pasi. We don't roll like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Help me with your belt. <laughs> so he gives me his belt. I put, I tie it down. I, you know, I tuck in. I go and welcome Pastor M, Pastor Caro. They come to the church. They're not even coming to preach. You guys, that day, your, your heart is just pumping. I preach what I thought was a sermon or a resemblance of one. And then after service, Pastor M is talking. He's talking with us. And then that day, he told me, I want you to join. I want you to come into, to, not to join. I want you to sit in our executive pastor's team, I want you to know how we think. What Pastor Kevin used to say now had come uh, to pass. What a shock, I know. What a shock. And then, and then uh, so, so we, 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 I joined the, the, the executive team. Uh, we are sitting there. We are listening to guys think. We are, it's amazing. Like, but somehow, uh, 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 I had, in my mind, I had fathers, you know, like Pastor Kevin, Pastor Nderito, Pastor, Pastor Kiyama. I mean, uh, Pastor Kema and Pastor BX, they, they, I could connect with them that way. But then after a short while, Pastor M gives us this book called Loyalty and Disloyalty. Oh! Let's read the book. And then all of a sudden, him and Pastor Karo have to become our fathers. I, there was a disconnect in my mind because for everyone that I had acquired as a father, Pastor M was their boss. So Pastor M was their guy. Like, like how does that guy become now your father? You know what I mean? So I really struggled with that. Um, I had fathers in the ministry, what I considered to be fathers. I didn't know how to connect with Pastor M at that point. And so I remember I actually went to Pastor Milton. Uh, Pastor Mills, I was like, yo, Pastor Mills. Wisdom, wisdom. I was like, Pastor Mills, I, 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 I can't seem to connect with Pastor M as a father because to me he's always been my father's boss. And so Pastor Milton, in classic style, puts his hand on my shoulder and say, you know, Milton, Jumba, Jumba like a big house. Happy New Year. Enter into the house and gain wisdom. Remove your shoes. This ground is holy. Hey! I was like, okay. I'll, so I, he told me this. He told me something powerful. He said, um, oh, I shared something. I shared uh, on our wedding day. On our wedding day, Pastor Bex had pulled me aside. We have a picture of our wedding day, by the way. I want to show you. I was two days from being a Zinjathropas. Because uh, I was doing reverse evolution. Yeah. This woman has worked on me, people. Don't see this. It is God's goodness. <laughs> anyway, so this, uh, she married potential, let me tell you. Yeah. That watch was not even working. It was just a prop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time stood still for real. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Anyway, so Pastor Milton told me, oh, so Pastor, K, Pastor BX on our wedding, they had pulled me aside and said, uh, and, and, and he had prayed and said the, the organizational, the, the, the strategic mind that is in Pastor Kiyama, we prayed over you, the organizational, uh, you know, mind that is in Pastor uh, Kevin Derecho, we pray over you, and the shepherd in heart that is in me, we pray it over you. So I actually knew what I'd received from all of them. So I understood that with Pastor BX, and he said this to me, he said, he almost said, like, if you serve as a servant, you're going to do well, you're gifted, and you have all these things, graces. But he said, if you take Pastor Moredi as a father, you receive the capacity to have a vision and to remain true to it. Come on. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, I realized that, I realized something, I didn't have the words for it back then. But as, I, as I've evaluated my life, I've come to realize that God wanted to show me how gracious he is to me. God wanted to unlock some things to me, but I had a choice to be lost in the words and terminology and lose out on the grace that was rightfully mine. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I could be caught up in mommy, daddy, you know, you know I could be caught up in that. But that is just uh, the front ground for the blessings that the Lord wanted to unlock through the principle of Pastor Moredi being a father over me. It's in that time that I went home. 
and told my wife, behold your mother, behold your father, kaende, kaende, we are following. It was for real. It's true. I came and said, now I understand why they have to become a father, they have to become a mother uh, to us. And so that's a, a, a story of now coming to share this. So why would God give us a spiritual parents? Uh, um, uh, you see, you were created for a purpose and a reason. Ephesians 2.10, we're going to read together. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which... The yellow parts are always you, for you guys. Uh, and that's a, my, like, like my love gift to you because our culture loves yellow. So like it's my, me giving uh, to you. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. For us, our purpose precedes us. God had work to be done. Keep the verse up. God had work to be done. So he has prepared the work. And so he said, who can best do this work? He said, let me create Dorcas so she can be able to do this work. So by the time you were born, there was your purpose was already ahead of you. What a shock. Yeah. And it's because of that that you didn't get to choose some of the most important things in your life. Yeah. God decided your purpose is too important for me to allow you to choose some things. Number one, you will not choose a generation you'll be born in. Some of us would have said, let me be born in pre-independent Kenya so that I can buy land before. You know. <laughs> but God, like, well, your purpose is too important to be born together at that time. Yeah. The second thing God chose for you uh, was your gender. Yeah. Don't start singing if I was a boy. Your purpose is in your gender. If God wanted your purpose to be achieved in the other one, he would have given it to you. But for the things he created you for, he said, this is too important for you to choose. Yeah. God chose, God chose your race and nation. Yeah. He was like, ah, you, if I make you fair-skinned, you will be terrible. For the sake of your purpose, some melanin poppy. Like, let me help you. Let me help you. You will be working in Kenya. You, let me help you. Yeah. He chose your height. Yeah. Gave you some wiggle room with the weight. <laughs> yeah. But also God chose your parents. You didn't get to choose that. You didn't get to choose that. I truly believe because it's tied to your God-given purpose. For what purpose? For what reason that God give you parents? For the sake of inheritance. Yeah. Which is tied to your purpose. There are some things that God says, I, I really want you to achieve some things. So because of that, the best family for you to be born in is this family so that you can get, receive these things from your parents so then you can go somewhere else. But in as much as your biological family is awesome, your biological family is, what else? Awesome? Amazing! Fantastic! Great! In as much as your, fa your biological family has, is all those words, there is still something else that God wanted to give you because you have a, a dimension that is not just biological, you are a spiritual person as well. And so for that reason, God gives you spiritual parents for the purposes of spiritual inheritance. Yeah. Your biological family is amazing, but there are some things they lack. But those things are supplied in the spiritual family that God puts you in. That's why if you didn't think about it, you guys, eh, uh, uh, you really didn't choose the church you landed in. It was by God's grace, as he said. You maybe have been church hopping and then you landed at church and say, ah, I feel like I like this one. No, it is God's frequency in you that, like, yeah, this is the church you'll settle in. Yeah. For the sake of spiritual inheritance. Why? Your lifetime is too short for you to work for everything you need in your life. You need to inherit some things. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. You are, if you want to work for everything you needed for your God-given purpose, 70 years is not enough. Indeed, that's why you need an eternity. And so God says, let me give you some in inheritance. You need to inherit some things. Otherwise, if you work for everything, you will, it, will be, it will take too long. And so for me, uh, uh, my, my biological dad is a magistrate. Uh, he's a judicial man. But then God has called me to be a preacher. How does he do that? You know, my dad has never planted a church, uh, doesn't preach, you know, has never led a movement. He has done other amazing things of which I've inherited. My dad can convince you beyond your belief. Yeah. You know, but my dad has an answer for something. And I think I inherited some of those things. It's hard for me to lose an argument. My wife is rolling her sleeve and says, yeah, bring it on. We'll not scatter around this one. <laughs> Yeah, but my dad, my, wife, my dad can convince us beyond our belief. You know, yeah. But, you know, and there are some of those things that we, the idea to outlay ideas, we got it from me, we inherited. 
But he didn't plant a church. He was not a preacher. He didn't lead a mo global movement. And so God had to place me under fathers from whom I could inherit all that. Otherwise, if I was to work for it, it would take too long. God gave me Pastor Kiama to preach on stage. Be the man is a great preacher. Aye. Yeah. For me, I just received it as an inheritance. He's the first man who called me into his office and said, you'll have an upfront ministry before I could see it in myself. Yeah? Gave me Pastor BX, a man with a shepherding heart. But no downtown, it could have been worse. <laughs> Why it not for this man? Yeah, Pastor Kevin Derito, how to have a decent level of, of organization. It could have been worse. Yeah? Pastor, Ke Pastor M, to grab a global vision and the capacity to remain faithful to it. Amen? Yeah. Your lifetime is too short for you to work for everything you need in your life. You need to put yourself in a position to inherit some graces from fathers and mothers, of course. Yeah. You don't believe? Just watch. 2 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Now, we're going to remain on verse 5, Kidogo 2. So, I am reminded of what? So, th this is Paul writing to who? And he says, I am reminded of what? Which first... And I am persuaded what? Pause it there. What has Timothy inherited from his parents? Sincere faith. So when I said fathership, you know, fathers, I meant mothers as well. That's what the, I'm just using a term that helps you, um, that allows us to, to continue. But you can see something that Timothy inherited from not just his mother, but his grandmother. Inheritance that has been passed down. But Timothy... If Timothy was only going to remain at that level, he was only going to inherit sincere faith. But there's something the Lord wanted to give him in line of his God-given purpose. And that's why verse 5 is followed by verse 6. And verse 6 says, come on, media team, he says, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. Which what? Oh, come on, somebody. God knew that for Timothy, you just don't need sincere faith. You need something else. You need to be an itinerant preacher. You need to be a church planter. You need to write some letters which will end up in the Bible. That's why Timothy is mentioned as a co-author in about six of Paul's letters. There was something more in Timothy, and so he needed to become and other fathers that he could inherit, not just sincere faith, but something deeper. Come on, somebody. I will need you to see it for yourself. That's why by the time Paul is saying 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, by the time he's coming to say, you then, he meant it. He meant it. Because sons inherit from fathers. He meant it. Of course, you have different types of fathers. You have a heavenly father, yeah? Father from whom the entire family is mentioned. So you have your heavenly father. You have your father in faith, the person who invited you into, you know, like, you know, led you to salvation. You have your father in ministry, the person who, you know, sort of ushered you into the work of ministry or gave you a position and stuff like that. You have your spiritual fathers, yeah, the people who nourish you or nurture you uh, in spiritual matters. Yeah, you have your father-in-law, very important person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, your biological father, I don't think I mentioned that. I learned one the, a bit about uh, two months ago. You have your father in sin. Yeah, the person who introduced you to your first drink, your first porn site, your first thingy. They became your first. Some of you, you could be struggling. I'm sorry, I'm just feel led to say, but yes, you could be struggling with an identity issue, but it's not because of you. It's because of the father you accommodated or acquired as a father in sin over you. We are disconnecting from those one today in Jesus' name. Ah, yeah, that inheritance is cut off. We are, we are gone. Jesus, we are now under your lineage. No more fathers in sin in Jesus' name. Yeah. But let me tell you, let me just start it there. I feel like you need to give the, the, the job. In many ways, was Absalom's father in sin. In many ways, he is the one who ended up killing Absalom. Yeah. Korah was the Korahite's father in sin. He's the one who led the rebellion. They died together. The ground opened. They went. Yeah. So we are disconnecting from those ones in Jesus' name. Yeah. So what are the blessings of sonship? Uh, finally, now I can enter into what I was asked to talk about. Uh, so, so, of course, we have a specific verse that says, honor your father and mother, Ephesians 5, yeah? Uh, you know, um, that and it gives some three specific blessings there. But I, I, as I was thinking through, you know, this conversation, I really led, felt led to, to share with us from Luke 15. Luke 15, this is a story of the prodigal son. 
uh, and it's an amazing thing because he was a prodigal, but he was a son nonetheless. And, 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 and there are some things he disconnected from when he walked away, but there are some things he connected with as a son when he came back. And I think there are some, yes, the Ephesians gives us three specific broad strokes, but I think the prodigal son allowed us to, allows us to see some specific applications, some specific blessings for sons. And so, and so yeah, uh, uh, we're going to be going through that. Now, we all know the story, of course. This amazing father uh, is there, he's chilling. One of his sons, he has two sons. The youngest son comes over to him and says, hey, give me a portion of my inheritance. Then verse 13 says this. Verse 13 says, it says what? I actually, my personal belief is that the son probably didn't want to walk away. I'm just thinking. But once he got everything, he was like, not long after that. You see, nothing has a capacity to reveal the prodigal in you as when you've made it in life. Oh, yes. We are all sons until we make it. What a shock. Yeah. Some of you right now, you're a son, then God for being broke. The day you make it in life, not long after that, you are running in Karura on Sunday morning. Shindwe. <laughs> in Kenya, we say, Pesa Kidogo too. You know, Pesa Kidogo too, you are now wearing Crocs and socks. Shindwe. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> hey. But there are some things he experienced as a son when he came back. He was a prodigal as he left, but when he was coming, that was done. We call him the prodigal son, but I think we should call him the son who came back, like or something. Yeah? The first thing that is a blessing for you is identity. Identity. I've redacted some of these verses, but verse 15 to 17, or chapter 15, to verse 17 to 20, um, I want you to, I've redacted some of the verses, but I want you to see the number of times Father Son is repeated in these three verses, yeah? When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my? Now, he didn't say, how many of the man that I left? He's still in an identity, though he was in the wrong place. And so he's not just, how many of my, my brother's father? You know, like, like that person over there, my, my father, like my what about that for identity in a wrong place? When you're in the darkest of things, you're like, my father. And that allows him to reorient. He came back to his senses. The first thought he has is about father. He doesn't start thinking, ah, you know, like, like there's something connected to his father. Not just the servants have food, but my father's. Am I making sense? Yeah, I will go back to and say to him, I no longer want it to be called. Yeah. He was still a son, but he's saying, I'm not worthy. It doesn't mean he's not a son. He's saying, I'm not worthy. Yeah? So he got up and went to his, his, ran to his, yeah, identity. Both when you are doing well and when you are lost, fathers help you to reorient your life. I thank God that when he was in that place of darkness, he had a certain bearing that would reorient him back. Ah, and maybe now he was walking, he was walking, he came to the road and said, this is the road that leads home. Ah, come on, somebody. Yeah. And sometimes we need fathers because the truth, the reality of our lives is that we come to times when you get lost, but you need to walk around and say, ah, this is the road back home. Yeah, this is the road back home. In the word play, we see the sense of identity that is rooted in this. Identity. Most of us, you, you can't apply for any serious government document without writing your surname. Like, who are you? Who do you really belong to? Yeah. Identity. That's what Jesus had with his father. Matthew 3.17. My, this is, yeah, whom I love, with whom I'm well pleased. Being a son gives you identity. But the, <coughs> do you notice that the temptation of the devil to Jesus was not really to come against his power or his person per se or his life, but it was come between him and his identity. Yeah. That's why he comes and says, if you are the son of God, he doesn't say because you are the son of God. He wanted to put suspicion between him and the father because once the devil has you doubting your identity as far as fatherhood is concerned, then he has you. Yeah. Because he is also our father. The problem is that he's the father of all lies and everything that the Bible says. 
He still wants some children, but because he can't get them, he'll convince them to share their identity with their heavenly father and their spiritual fathers and their biological fathers so that they can now gain a new identity of a father in him. You have another father. He becomes now your identity. True. Yeah. The moment the devil... <laughs> and you know sometimes, Pastor M says, <laughs> the devil speaks in first person singular. You, he talks to you, you think you're thinking, but it's the devil speaking. Yeah. What a shock! He's a master, he's a father of all lies and a deceiver. You guy. Yeah. And so sometimes you think you're thinking, but it's really the devil who's speaking. Yeah. Yeah. If Pastor M is my father, why is Pastor Angie on sabbatical? Me, I'm here laboring. <laughs> I think I'm thinking, but it's the devil. That's why the Bible says, capture every thought, make it obedient to God. If this is not of God, submit to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, if Pastor M is my father, you know, why, why is he traveling with Pastor James? Yeah. Yeah. What a shock. Why did he correct me that way in public? In fact, my team, my entire team was there. And he corrected me harshly. If yeah. Why is he visiting all the other churches and apart from ours? Yeah. In fact, he passed by there as we were going to love it on. There, there, there. <laughs> yeah. He keeps affirming every other person apart from me. You, you think you're thinking, but the devil is allowing you to think in first person singular. Because the moment the devil has me doubting my identity with Pastor M, my work in the movement is done. I'm telling you, and I'm using myself, but for you, if you are a DG leader, the moment you are doubting your zone of pastor, done. The moment you are, you are a DG member, the moment you start doubting the, 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 the call of your DG leader, done. Yeah, you have to sort of fight for your identity because the devil will never tell you because you are the son of God. He'll always tell you if to bring that gap there. Am I preaching well? All right, these guys don't want to listen. Oh, you want to listen? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll tell you. Number two, protection. Number two, protection. <laughs> Number two, protection. You know, there are things we enjoy. There is protection we enjoy from our, from our fathers, whether we know it or not, whether we are aware of it, of, of it or not. Verse 14 says this. It says, uh, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and began to be in need. When a severe famine came in that whole country, it affected the son who was not at home. Yeah. The one who was gone is the one who felt the, the, the lack of cover. Because fathers have a way of offering protection. Yeah. In fact, at home, they had patent cults. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe today there is some dryness, some famine you're experiencing in your life, and the only reason is you have, you're out of cover. The cover is there, but you're out of it. And so there's dryness, there is, the difference is humility. You go back, and the cover is restored immediately. Yeah. Fathers protect from famine and danger. In fact, Deuteronomy 21, uh, 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 you know, sort of says that this son should have been stoned when he's coming back. And I believe that's why the father ran to the son, he kissed him and covered him. And he was basically saying, I'm cool with my son, but if you want to stone him, you have to stone me first. Come on. Yeah. Our heavenly father, Jesus on the cross, arms wide open, hugging us in a sense, saying, if you want to go to hell, it's over my dead body, and for real, he died. So that you don't go there. Fathers offer protection, even from damnation in that sense. Yeah. We, even in our homes, we offer protection to our kids. Yeah. yeah. For me, if thieves came into our house, I'd run into my son's room and cover him and tell my wife, check out those thieves. Yeah. I protect the boy. Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll close the door and speak from this side and say, babe, we're only three of us in this family. Two of us are safe. Check out the thing. <laughs> yeah. My son is so arrogant. He doesn't know who our landlord is. Yeah. So arrogant, he can't co make the connection between food and our job. He can't. Yeah. He's like, he's, I don't know. Yeah, but you know, he doesn't know, he just goes to school. He doesn't know whether we paid school fees or not. He's so protected 
from things he's not even aware of. Yeah. The other day, he's grown a little bit nini nini. So we bought him three school sweaters. He was not aware that his sweaters are torn. We are the ones who looked at him and these sweaters, number one, don't fit you. Number two, your badge is sort of starting to get out. And so you need something new. He was not aware. But that he doesn't need to because he's under protection. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. What does scripture say? Matthew 4, 5, and 6. We'll chill at verse 5. Kidogo, I think. Uh, no, Malachi, rather. Malachi. Malachi uh, um, 4. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children back to their father. Or else. Now, there are two ways of interpreting that verse. Number one is that, you know, if the hearts of fathers are not returned to their children and children back to their fathers, the Lord will do something that he doesn't want to do. Or else I'll release, you know, I'll strike the land with a destruction. But the other way of interpreting that verse is in light of other scriptures. Where you realize that the earth is already under a curse and under destruction. That's why when KPLC, KPLC is our Kenya, power, you know, our power company. Uh, KPLC for our visitors means Kenyans, please light your candles. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when KPLC does that thing, the food in your fridge starts to rot. Yeah? It's, that's why when you leave your garden unattended to, it already, weeds come up. And for Mashariki guys, it's not weeds for puff, puff, puff. It's weeds for, like, you know. <laughs> what a shock! <laughs> you know, I saw Pastor Milton say, ah, which farm? Which farm is that? <laughs> Those, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Pastor Milton, I've already bought food with this money. Me, I'm over here preaching. I'm waiting just to finish that anyway. <laughs> yeah. The, the land is already a curse, but perhaps fatherhood is the agency that God has placed, put in place to reverse the curse. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What is a curse? Continuous frustration. You are continually frustrated, yet fathers are there, and they are the agency that God has put in place to reverse the curse that is already in effect anyway. You know, the father didn't curse the son when he left. He experienced the repercussion of being away from a father. Yeah, it's not the father who said be cursed. And no, no. He had left the protection. Are you ready for number three? Guys, you know, I have seven points. If you don't, uh, I'll, I'll give you only two. I'll finish. Are you ready? Guys at the back don't want to hear me preach. Guys at the back, I can see them. They don't want to hear me preach. Do you want to hear me preach? All right, all right. Number, number three, inheritance. Inheritance. Yeah. These are the graces that are in your father that become yours too. Yeah. Uh, verse 22. Verse 22 says this. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, but put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. You know, the father asked for the best coat, his sandals and to be put on the boy, yeah? and you know, a ring. Uh, uh, in fact, at this point, from afar, from afar, you couldn't distinguish between who's the father and who's the son. In fact, the son looked better because he had the best robe. The graces of his father had become his. Come on, somebody. Inheritance, inheritance. All the graces that were in his father's were his for the taking. You know, Pastor Kaiman and Pascaro have invited us to belong as sons. And to partake of the graces in their lives. Yeah? They have talked about happy marriages. Hey! Yeah! You know, let me tell you guys. Eh? Pastor Faith and I, in many ways, I really believe we were not met. We would still be married because God believes in marriages. But <laughs> sometimes we are in the thick of it. We go and sit with Pastor Emma and Pastor Caro. Our marriage is sorted. In fact, sometimes Pastor Emma and I are just talking about, the, ah, yeah, you know, I saw some land, nini, nini. Pastor Emma and Pastor Caro, are, I mean, Pastor, Pastor Fida and Pastor Caro are being helped in their marriage. I'm like, ah, babe, what did you talk about marriage? Ayish. I'm treated well. Yeah, happy marriages. It's just an inheritance. As my, there are times we've sat with this couple and it sorted us for another, you know, two days. I mean, we were, we were doing badly, so we came back for a redos. <laughs> yeah, but it really helped us. And it's an inheritance of it's an inheritance of this house. Me, I'm like, me, I take it. It's ours. Yeah. Wealth without sorrow. 
Hey! Hey! Yeah. You know, there's a day, <laughs> there's a day Pastor M texted me and said, hey, Pastor Flonzi, how do you save? How much do you save, rather? And I asked him, how much do you pay me? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> what a shock! Yeah, but let me tell you, let me give you the backstory. My, I actually feel like, you know, for me, like, whether it's a truth or not, but inside I just feel like I'm a global citizen. Me, I should not be anchored in one place. I should be able to leave at a moment's notice to go and preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. And so I never felt or feel, uh, it has since changed, felt the need to invest in this country. Not because I do want to, because I just want to be tied down. You know, if I now go and then now I have a house, then now it's uh, Airbnb, you know, things of this world, yeah? And so I was like, I don't want... And Pastor M knew that. And so one day he called us and said, I want you to put some roots in the ground so that even if you're called, you have a thing that can still help you. But even if you don't want it, you can sell it and leave. You know. And so he spoke that to us. And so we have a, this kind of investment group with my boys went and, you know, our couples. So we went put some money together. We were going to do this investment. Um, uh, um, and then the investment didn't work out. We gave away uh, the, the resources. I mean, that's just how pastors think. Um, and so, and so, and so at this point, uh, so Pastor M texts me. So we've given this money. We're like, okay, God, what do you want to? We really wanted to put in our first investment. So Pastor M now texts me this thing. And so I tell, tell him the amount. And then he sends me something and says, I really feel you need to invest in this, in this thing. And then he says, Pastor Karo and I are putting, are going to help you. We are going to ensure come what may you are own in a house. Yeah. Well, without sorrow. You know, when those guys called me and said, what name do you want in your title deed? I was like, what title deed? Me, all I knew my name would be is on is a milk card. You know, like something <laughs> practical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, without sorrow. Just because you are a son of the house. And it's going to go down like that to the last person who's a son of this house. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Global impact. These are the graces Pastor Emma said are his. Global impact. Let me tell you. Last year, uh, uh, um, we were preparing for fearless. We really are frugal with resources. So Pastor Emma said we are not paying an MC. Not an MC. Pastor Emma allow us to even give. We found one who's really good. We'll give them an ordering of 5K. No. No, we are not doing that. Pastor Kilonzi and Pastor Angie, you guys are the MCs. <gasps> Sissy, no, Pastor M. You guys are the MCs. Case closed. So it's us. So we are Pastor Angie. Okay, now we better become friends. You know we are doing this thing. So, so now we come to Fearless. And so Fearless is really an international global platform, genuinely. And so all of a sudden, Pastor Angie and I have to host. So this is, a, you know, but we, it's not like we volunteered, we were told. So we, we came. And we did the thing. Oh, of course, we hear. We listen. We instructions received. We came. We did the thing. And totally enjoyed it, genuinely. After that, the, we were preparing to go for the Transform Conference in Uganda. So unbeknownst to me, they were looking for an MC. And they looked for an MC. They looked for an MC. Literally a week to up more. <laughs> hey! You up more. Came to the meeting where guys are preparing and said, have we... Guys, I have the person, Kev the Rev. First of all, he calls me Kev the Rev. Kev the Rev. <laughs> you guy, everyone in the room apparently says, ah, like, why were we looking? So all of a sudden, I get my first international preaching, I mean, hosting gig. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> went to Uganda, uh, did the hosting. Uh, you guys, let me just, the, I'm only sharing this so that you can know well the sorrow plus global impact. I, other, otherwise, so I was given honorarium in dollars. I know, who wants the blessing? Who wants the blessing? <laughs> so, so I was like, and then we want to go back to the, to the this host, or, you know, room where we're being hosted, Pastor Amy's meeting with us. And Ali said, moving forward, your international ministry has opened up. I was like, I receive. I, but then I felt this conviction to, to not take this on. You know that, like your first dollar. Hey. And it's not by finance where you have to come back and say, these are the receipts. As you can see, the, <laughs> the tax was different from what was written there. Oh, nini, nini, no, you, you, there are some. No, like, this is your money. I was like, no, I'm only sharing this for your benefit. I went back to Pastor Moridi and said, I want to sow this. 
you are the one who spoke in touch with me. I want to sew it back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then as I was walking away, I said, so it's already open international ministry. I said, in fact, I think he said, may, may the, you know, like, yeah, let it be. As I walked away, I said, I want to be paid in dollars when I do it. When everywhere I speak international, I want to be paid in dollars. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I received an email from a church in America. <laughs> yeah. And they said, Kevin and Faith, they don't know I'm Kevin the Rev, but it's okay. <laughs> they will know, they will know. Yeah. Kevin and Faith, blah, 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 come speak this day. I think July, June 6th to 14th, we'll be speaking with 20s and 30s. Gee, what, what, what? We are arranging your itinerary. Hey! I answered back and said, are you paying in dollars? Because there, there is a covenant I have. There is a covenant I have. Hey! Yeah, but uh, I didn't ask that. I said, you know, I humbly accept it. And if it's an air ticket, you'll pay. We'll come. We'll walk. Whatever. We are coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, and so th these are your graces for you to receive. Now, here's the coolest part. I, my joy is, to, is starting to see some of the graces in Pastor Faith and I now go to our daughters and sons as well. Oh, come on. Come on. Pastor Nyamu, are you there? Come on, Pastor Nyamu. Come on. Come on. <laughs> For our sake, let me allow Pastor Nyamu. Come on, let's celebrate the newest church planter in the movement. <laughs> Come on. Newest church plant doing super well. <laughs> Again, I'm only, we, are, you can have, we are only giving this illustration so that you can see the, the transfer. Yeah. Yes. So, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so for those guys who don't know me, my name is Pastor Nyamu. From Amunoraka, <laughs> the newest baby, and uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Pastor Kilonzi, for inviting me here. I just want to demonstrate what you're saying. I think it's easy to hear, and you're like, oh, it sounds nice, it sounds good. But I joined the staff team in 2019, and I joined the staff team as an admin and PA to Pastor Kevin Deretu. And what you said is so true, you know, highly organized. But then he had to transition and he went to the States. And then uh, Papa Kilo, then it was just Pastor Kevin Kilonzi, joined the team. And then I was happy to you know, support you as, as we work together as your admin and PA. And then COVID happened. COVID happened, we had to you know, close church and then go home. Uh, and then I, I had, and then uh, that time I remember I was pregnant with Asha, the last one. But I remember Papa Kilo called us to a meeting and he said, okay, now you're all pastors. Me in my head, I'm like, no, me, I'm the admin. You know, I'm like, so the rest are pastors? Me, I'm the admin. They said, no, 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 we are all pastors, yeah? If you work for this church, you're a pastor. Still, me, I was like, no. Then he gave us call lists. You had to call people. So me, I was like, ah, there's no way I'm getting a call list. After all, I'm an admin. I got a call list. I was like, wait, okay, this thing, okay, I'll do the calls. I made the calls and then I went on my maternity leave. I came back in June. Now, when I came back in June, the first meeting, I will never forget. It's my first meeting. I was on, I was on maternity break. I come back and then um, Pastor Mgambi, my brother and very good friend, was, was planting wayaki and then services needed someone to step in. So my first meeting, it's announced. Pastor Nyamu will be in charge. It wasn't Nyamu then. It was just Nyamu. You'll be in charge of services. I'm like, what? services. Luckily, they were online. So, like, you know, it, they were, there wasn't much to do. But then we had to reopen the church. So I had to learn quick. And then the conversation for following came about. Um, I remember you called us to your house. You know, I remember living in that house. You guys, I felt like I had a mesh, like, Marvin. You know those hats you put on, eh? I was struggling with that conversation. I'm like, what is this? I've been at Mabuno since 2010. And I'm like, okay, what is happening? And I remember my head was so heavy. I just went back, I told Joe, my husband, told me I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, you know, we need to buy food and pay rent. So <laughs> let's just take this out. So I continued working, but it was such a hard space. It was a hard space. I used to dread yeah, Tuesdays. 
because I was struggling. I wasn't seeing this whole father, mother thing. I was like, what is this? Who even, who does this? It wasn't a thing that, no, that I had ever experienced or even thought that I could, I could, you know, I could actually even partake in. And I remember there was one, so they used to give me a ride, drop me at Garam. So I had so many questions. And then I was struggling to be part of the family. I was just like, you know what? I'm not appreciated. I'm not loved. And then I remember there was one staff meeting. I'll be very candid. Um, I, I think because I was in charge of services, something didn't go quite well. So, and, and I remember, um, and you, you know, Pastor Kilonzi does this for all of us, but that day it just hurt so much because I was already struggling as, you know, as a daughter. Then I wasn't a daughter. Pastor Kilonzi was just my boss. So, but you know, I have, they have to drop me at Ngara. So I was like, no, I have to be humble. So I enter their camp. And I'm just seated at the back. I'm not saying anything. And then they asked me, what is wrong? Why? And then I cried. <laughs> and let me tell you, I cried and I decided, you know what? I'm going to leave it all in this car. I said everything. What I was feeling, my struggles. Oh, you know, I don't feel loved. I don't feel appreciated. I said everything. And you were with uh, Pastor Faith Kilonzi. And I remember you, the look on your face. You were so confused. You were like, like, what, what? And that's the day I remember I became your daughter. And I think I went home and I think I texted you and I said, you know what? I accept you as my father and my mother in faith and in ministry. And I choose to follow you. That's the day I had to deal with the pain. And all those things were even assumptions. They, were never, they weren't even true. What you're saying is that the devil will actually give you those thoughts, you know. And, and he had really, you know, he had, had a, he had time to feed my mind with those thoughts. And then when that happened, let me tell you, that's when things for me started to change. I remember when you asked me to preach the first time, I was so confused. It's like, I want you to preach on Sunday. I said, no. I laughed. <laughs> I laughed and I was like, no, no. Then I, then I remembered uh, something past time said, that you do it even when you're afraid. So I texted and said yes. Then I called back. I'm like, so if Pastor M comes on Sunday, you still want me to preach? <laughs> I just needed to be sure <laughs> that this is not, I'm not there. And I did it. And then I remember that's when you started. You started to call me Pastor Nyamu. I used to be so confused. But you were able to see me in a way I could not see myself. And for me, I've experienced just by accepting and just gladly calling you my father, I've seen the graces in your life operate. Then me, live, live. So I joined the staff team in 2019. Um, one of the graces that Pastor Kilonzi has over his life is acceleration. <laughs> Yanni, let me tell you guys, even me, I, sometimes I don't believe that I am a campus pastor. You know, I'm like this, I have truly seen the grace of acceleration that is on you operate on me, like operate in my life. I have seen it. And it's the kind of acceleration, I love what you say about this, that you're not teleported, that you run along the road. You, I, I, like, I, I don't think I've skipped anything, you know. You've made sure that I've, I have know that it's operating, that I'm still grounded. You've kept me grounded. So that's the first grace that operates in Pastor Kilonzi's life. And you guys can, you can attest. 2019, I was an admin. 2023, I'm a campus pastor. Um, and then there's the second grace that I've seen operate in your life is financial progression. Let me tell you, we did, uh, Pastor Kilonzi taught us how to do home budget. He asked to download the app, make sure you, you know, track all your expenses, track all your income. I remember, so we do that. In December, I tracked all our income. I had to take a screenshot and send to my husband. Because I was like, we were never operating in this dimension. So for me, I have seen it. The third grace that operates in Pastor Kevin Kilonzi's life that I have seen it is the grace of being noticed. And he, you know, I remember this once Pastor Carol called me. I was like, Pastor Carol is calling me. You know, you made it. And, and she was asking me, <laughs> oh, maybe I've been called by Pastor Carol. <laughs> and she asked me to do something. And I was like, you know, baby, I was like, any Mimi? 
Nimepigiwa simu na Pastor Caro, yani me. Aye. <laughs> oh, international guys for me it just blew my mind. But I've seen those graces operate in my life because I chose to follow Papa Kilo as we call him and to follow Faith Kilonzi. And it's just been you know it's it's I struggled with it, but as soon as I resolved in my heart to actually do this thing. I have seen these graces and I'm forever grateful to even just be in Mabuno at such a time. And, and that thing is so true because if I had not taken those things, not even received those things and inheritance, I could have to work so hard for the rest of my lives. But here I am just basking in my inheritance and in the graces that you're operating. Thank you. Come on, let's celebrate Pastor Nyamu. Yeah. Yeah. Inheritance. Oh, we are still in point number three. <laughs> Inheritance. Second Kings 2.10. Elijah is having a, a conversation with Elisha. And he says, Elisha asks him, uh, uh, you, know, you know, what can I do for you? Elijah asks, Elisha says, uh, give me a double portion of your inheritance, of your spirit, of your grace, of your anointing. And in verse 10, Elijah answers and says, you have asked a difficult thing. Yeah. Then he said, yet if you see me. Everyone knew that Elijah was anointed. There was no question. But not everyone saw him. Yeah? There are graces in the house. But if you need them, you've asked for a difficult thing. Yeah. There are graces in Pastor M. There are graces in your campus pastor. There are graces in your DG leader. But if you need them, you've asked for a difficult thing. Yet if you see them, sort of move past the superficial design, the gem in, yet if you see them, it shall be done for you. I've often told my downtown staff team and especially the discovery team, don't leave church before I leave. It's not because now I want people to wait. No, just don't leave. I've come to discover that I give a very small percentage of my heart on stage because I'm on time. I'm on a clock. And so you stick me, and it's not just sticking for, oh, he's there, he's there, you know, le he's left, okay, now let's leave. No, it's, it's tarry. Chill around. Now come and ask me. That, th that joke you made, was it actually true? Or, you know, it was, a, uh, come and ask me. But then this thing you said, I didn't understand. L like, sit around, let's talk. It's not for don't leave, but in being the compound is be with me. That's what the disciples did. They, they, everyone has left. They have had the teaching. In fact, the, the, the place of teaching has a lesser anointing in that sense than the place of tarrying. When everyone was taught good, amazing, they ate the bread. But when they tarried, they carried bread. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. They, 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 they tarried. They were there. They had something deeper. They were explained for the parable that they didn't, no one else understood. In fact, today we understand it just because it was written. Even us would be guessing. But they tarried. Yeah. I've really enjoyed Pastor Amboya and Pastor Simon. Sometimes we, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can celebrate them. They're amazing people. Leads our kids' church. Many times we're over there, we are just, we are tarrying, and then they're like, today, where are we going today? And then we figure out a plot, and then we go and we sit, and they help our marriage. <laughs> or we help theirs. Uh, we talk some deeper things that we couldn't have talked with on stage because it's a place of tarrying. Yeah. I remember a day we went to uh, Lifeway. So li Lifeway Gathering, yes. At the Lifeway Gathering, we did the Lifeway Gathering and then after that they had a dinner organized. So my wife and I came sort of late for this one because we were at church and then we, we all went for the dinner. My wife and I were, do we go for the dinner? We're like, ah, if the prophet, Pastor M, is not tired and he has done all these things, we are going. We went there and we tarried. The conversations that happened in that table are still helping us to date. No, for real. Ask my, I'm not, I'm, this is not even a joke. We just start tarrying. And it's not a mindless tarrying. It's a, it's a sort of bosom tarrying. Like, like I'm leaning on your chest, sort of tell me, tell me the deeper thing. Tell me, I want to hear. And even if he doesn't say, like there is a like uh, there is a time person will just say, God bless you because you tarried. I'm like I take it. Me the blessing today I want Lord was for fair, uh, so I need it. I take it. Yeah, Th just that word is not empty. So you tarry, tarry around your campus pastor a bit more, tarry around your team leader. They have a blessing for you. You have asked for a difficult thing. Yet if you see me, ah. 
Number four, aligned generations. I'm going to move a little bit faster now. <laughs> aligned generation is the fourth blessing of sonship that I see here. Can you imagine if the prodigal son got married and had kids while away? <laughs> that entire generation would have been lost. Can you now imagine what happened if he, held, if he now got kids in now back, back to his father's land? Can you imagine now how he acted now as a father? And the stories he told them to say, guys, stay close to me. Aligned generations. Yeah. I asked Sumit to allow me to share this story. There's a time we're talking about family uh, with the team at downtown. And, um, and Sumit, you know, genuinely opened up and said, but see me, this thing for family, me, I don't feel it. In fact, I've asked my DG whether they feel like we are family and they all say, we don't feel it. We are not family. And I don't know, I think it's just God. I, I don't think I'm this bright. Um, he, <laughs> he, 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 I, I, I looked at him and said, the reason why your team can't feel like your family is because you haven't become a son just yet. And I said, you go back, call Pastor Kuria, father, call Joanne, mom. Your guys, you, 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 as it's a son who produces sons. You guy, that Sunday we met with him, the guy was different. He's calling mom. He's calling father. He's like, you stop struggling with the terminology. You get into it and you realize it's a, it's, a, it's a breakthrough for you. And today the man is thriving. Ask him. Business thriving. Nini thriving. Because he moved past. Aligned generations. Yeah. You, you leave this church. You know, sometimes you think, oh, it's just, you know, at, at a you know, physical level. You leave this church. You go start something out there without a fathering cover you have just started something that is misaligned. It's very easy now for your sons in that ministry to all be very random because they never saw you follow someone. Why should they follow you now? Number five, power and authority. Power and authority. Verse 22, the father asks for many things to be put on the son, but one of them in verse 22, um, Zeshari verse 22, uh, one of them was put a ring on it. I don't know whether it's there. But one of them was a put, put, a, put, put a ring on it. Uh, it's, but the father says, uh, put a ring. Give, give them a ring. Now, back in the day, they did have signatures. So they would, they would, they would write, and then they put wax. Uh, but then before it, uh, it solidifies, they would, they would take a ring and make an impression with a ring. So that was like the signet ring, like signature, signature ring. So they would, make, they would make an impression. And so basically when the father is saying, put a ring on this son, He's basically saying, son, you have the authority to transact on my behalf. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you have authority. You have power and authority. To, like anything you do now, once the ring, uh, it's as though I'm the one who did it through you. What did Jesus said? Jesus says, truly, truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing up, uh, uh, on his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever, for whatever, the son does likewise. Yeah. Even Jesus, the reason he had power and authority is because he said, ah, I saw daddy heal someone today morning, I'm coming just to see it in the physical. Hey, I saw daddy raise someone from the dead, I'm coming just to confirm it in the physical. His power and authority was because he was bringing it from somewhere else. That's why when the Pharisees see that, they ask him, by what power and authority are you doing these things by? And because they could not understand the father, they said it was by Beelzebub. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says something very interesting in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, 14 to 17. He says this. He's talking to the Corinthians. And then he tells them, I do not write these things to shame you, but to, uh, as my beloved children, I warn you, for though you might be, have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I keep, keep the verse up. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Look at these guys. I urge you to it imitate you. Can, can I get a, a group of guys in some red hoodies? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Just stand over here. Just stand over here. Just stand over here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, 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 Pastor Mboy and uh, Rani come. So, uh, so Pastor Mboy come over here. So, I'm talking to the Corinthians. Hey, Corinthians. <laughs> I do not write anything to shame you, yet through Christ I became your father in the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to do what? Imitate me. Live like I live. Preach like I preach. Do whatever I do. Like when you, like, do. Imitate me. Now, verse 17. Who are they imitating? Verse 17. For this reason, I'm sending you Timothy. Hey! 
who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, will remind you my ways in Christ that I teach everywhere in every church. In other words, I'm asking you to imitate me, but I'm, because I'm not there, everything one boy does is actually what I'm doing. She has the power and authority to transact on my behalf. So when you imitate her, you're imitating me. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. We don't need Pastor M to go to every church. In fact, you're too many. If you chose one week, we'll take it. will be in September. But for this reason, I've sent you Pastor Mike. Hey! Who will teach and remind you. Because if you imitate Pastor Mike, you're imitating me. Isn't that powerful? You can have your seats. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. What a shock. When you, when, you, when you follow a father, you get the power and authority to act on their behalf. And that's why son should, you should never shield your people from your father. Don't be ashamed of them. By what power and authority are you acting from my father? Quote them as often. Talk about them. Don't be ashamed of them. Speak well of them. Let people know that you are under authority. Even speaking of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> these things are spiritual. John 16. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says this. But when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will? He will? Yeah. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will? Because it is from me that he will receive what is made, 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 being made known to you. Jesus says, I do what the Father does. The Holy Spirit was to receive his instruction from the Father. You, you are starting a DG and you want to teach them what you want. Hey! No! In a, there is nowhere in scripture where someone was sent and they chose their message. They were always given the message. Yeah. As long as, as it's under Mavuno Church, we know where the message comes from. And if you follow that, that gives you power and authority. You stand at downtown and say, guys, this is the year of acceleration and ease. Hey! Because I, I, I know where it came from, whether he prayed or not. The word is acceleration and it's the word for downtown. Yeah. I come and say, guys, this is a day for family impact. Spiritual fitness. Hey. Yeah. Power and authority because I believe it. I'm, I'm sharing with you what my sending authority has shared with me. That's why when you go to the DG, just say, this is what you are taught in church. Let's grapple with what God is telling us now. Yeah. Even the Holy Spirit that you are relying on is looking at you and saying, brother, at, even me, I was told. <laughs> no, you, you, you are saying, Lord, teach me what to tell these people. He's like, even me, I was told, I told Pastor Moravi. Have you heard? Just pass that on. Yeah. Yeah. What a shock. <laughs> I'm so glad they are from scripture. It's not me coming up with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Power and authority does not come from being original. Power and authority comes from copying. You copy until it's the original. You copy until people can't distinguish it. They listen to Pastor M, they listen to Pastor Kilonzi, they're like, Allah, it's the same thing. I have a father, I have power and authority. Number six, let me now come to a conclusion. Maybe let me call the band so that you can know it's true. <laughs> Continuous joy. Continuous joy. Part of the blessing. The father said of the prodigal son, uh, the so the prodigal son who remained, because I didn't believe there are two prodigal sons, <laughs> one who went, one who remained. Verse 32 of the one who remained. So the father comes to him and says, but we had to celebrate and be glad. Ah, yeah. When you, are, when you remain with fathers, it's they, they, they are the ones who tell everyone, but we had to celebrate and be glad. When guys are like, tell them, them to be quiet, he uh, says, if they keep quiet, the stones will do it. We had to celebrate and be glad. The joy of being under fathers is celebration and gladness. Ah, I remember going to Kaimosi. Hey! Yeah! Pastor Milton's house, I would never have gone to their shags. You, get, you know where I come from. Our rivers are so clear, you can't see the water. <laughs> we went to Pastor Milton's home. You guys, there is, a, there is a spring that starts on their farm. I was, Pastor M, where have you brought me? By the time it goes down the farm, it has divided into three, like Shihon, Euphrates, and Tigris. Like, it's like the Garden of Eden. You, I had never seen that. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Clear water, spring water, bottled at source. Yeah. We, Pastor M took us to Mombasa to celebrate Mavuna Mombasa. Loved that. Yeah. Hanging out in each other's homes. My joy is to also hang out with my own family. Now that my network pastors who have been hanging out with since Sunday. Hey! You know, let me tell you something. So we've been hanging out with our campus pastor since Sunday. No, pro, no pressure for other networks. Uh, 
But let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you something. While we were there, I realized no one else could have called all of them to hang out apart from us. No one else. If Pastor Nyamu decided to do it, she would have struggled. And even then, she would have had to say, there's this idea I have. Do you think I can? And when I say no, I'm not there. Even everyone else would be there. Are you sure? Well, yeah. That's the joy of fathers. And so maybe it's a call to fathers to call people. It's your job as a father to say, we had to be glad and to celebrate. And to call your children to be able to do, to do that. Yeah. Reconciliation, number seven, finally. Reconciliation, verse 28 says this. The old, so so <laughs> this is amazing. So the son has come, the father has welcomed them. Then a servant has, you know, seen this other brother who's lost in the home. And, and he comes and sort of tells the father. The Bible says this. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So the father went out. Ah! 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 The father went out. My prayer is that we can be a church where fathers are also not afraid to bring reconciliation because the father went out. Ah, come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. The father went out. It would have taken years for these two brothers to reconcile apart from the father. Sometimes the reason you are worrying or fighting the way you are is either the father has refused to go out or you are not under a father at all. Because the father would have recognized that what you are doing will break this family apart. And so the father goes out and brings reconciliation. I've seen Pastor M bring reconciliation between us because we are broken desperately. I've seen him call and say, but that's your brother. I've seen him tell me, go and help so-and-so, that's your brother. Go and help so-and-so, that's your sister. So this year, I'm writing a book. Yeah. Hey! And it's because Pastor M brought a tormentor in my life in the name of Docus uh, <laughs> Docus James over here. And, and say, help your brother to write a book. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I remember at some point, some of our uh, uh, young people at church, two of them were not seen eye to eye. And I was like, this thing will break the church apart. Because God is doing something powerful. But by themselves... It's such a big thing, they cannot reconcile it. So we called them to our house. My wife and I sat them together and told them, what do we do? What's the issue? And we took them through a process of reconciliation. Because that's what fathers do. They would avoid, in fact, now all of them have decided you are leaving church. I'm like, where are you going? This is home. But just because reconciliation was not there. That's a joy. Put yourself under fathers and this blessing becomes yours. Automatically. You don't even work for. In fact, the son, it's the father who he didn't know. He, the father went out and brought reconciliation between these two. Friends, the devil, the devil wants to cut you off from your fathers. You better grapple with the terminology. You better grapple with what does it mean to call you know, him Papa Kilo? Or you better grapple with that. You better grapple with that. But do not remove yourself from the principle that is encapsulated in that name. The devil is in the business of orphanhood. That's what Apmo says. But God is in the business of restoring a lost generation back to fathers. There's always a suspicion gap in every relationship. Whatever you fill it with, whatever you fill it with, widens the gap or reduces the gap. My prayer is that you can be people who reduce the gap, the suspicion gap between you and your father. And sometimes it's a conversation. We had a conversation with Pasanyamu and things were sorted. For as far as I was concerned, genuinely, as far as I was concerned, Pastor Nyamu was our daughter. You know, I'm telling you, I, like, I, there is nothing that could tell me. Because she was doing it, everything perfect. I could not tell you that her department was failing by any Nothing. But it reached a point where she had to look back and say, but you're also my father. Some of us today, you need to sort of turn back and say, but you're also my father. Because fathers can invite you, they can prepare a bash, they can do it, but if you don't come, they, they can't become your father. Pastor M says that sons, fathers raise sons, but sons call out fathers. My son right now, I can, you know, I can tell him, but I'm your father. But at some point when he grows up, he has to say, but you're my father. Otherwise, I'll just remain to be the man who brought him up. 
I want us to pray, and Pastor if you don't mind, I, can, I could ask you to come and just pray for us in this way. Because I want us to sort of come back to Father's house. Maybe you've been a prodigal for too long, but I want you to come back to the Father's house. I want you to come back and say, but you're my father. But I want you to see how the prodigal son did it. Verse 12. When the prodigal son is walking away in verse 12, he says, the younger one said to the father, father, give me. Everybody say, father, give me. But God took him through a process that by the time we're in verse 19, verse 19, the Bible tells us that he came to, he came, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He came and said, make me. In the beginning was, give me. But he came back and said, make me. Hey! I know you have been in a hard process, but the father today wants to make you a son. Come on, somebody. Yes, Pastor M, you can join me. Somebody come to prayer today and say, Father, make me a son and daughter of this house. Make me one who enjoys daughtership and sonship. Make me one who raises sons and daughters as a son and daughter myself. Make me one who enjoys the blessings of sonship. Make me one who sees past the terminologies and embraces what you are doing in this house. Make me, Lord. You don't need to give me because even I don't even know what to do with it. I'll waste it. But you make me. You make me. Wow. Can we just stand up to our feet? I think we just need to respond to the Lord right now. And I just want to invite you. This is a family space. And uh, for those who are maybe new, we just want to let you know this is a place where we are at home, we're in our Father's house, we speak to Him because we know He's here. So I just want to allow, to allow you to just take a moment because I, I sense the Lord is already speaking, He's already doing something right now. If somebody needs to confess, make a confession, maybe the enemy has been cutting in on you, maybe it's an intellectual uh, uh, struggle you've been having, maybe it's an issue of pain. Uh, like Pastor Nyamo, those are pain in your life that you've just not resonated. And right now you're hearing the Lord saying, you need to come back home. You need to come back home. Maybe you've been in that prodigal space, but you're saying, I, I need to make, I need to be different. In your compass, you've not followed. You've just not seen that space. Maybe you felt, I'm too old for this. But you're feeling right now, I just need to respond to God. Come on, speak to your father right now. He's here. Father, we just want to ask you that you would make us. Make us, make us, make me a son, make me a child. Unless I come to the kingdom like one of these, I will never enter the kingdom. This is what God said. I want to be a son. Lord, it's not been my culture, it's not been my background. Ah, I've been so used to being just that person on the outside who makes my own decisions. I live an independent life. Give me but I want to move from that and become somebody different who says, make me, who's willing to surrender myself to Jesus and to sonship. Make me, Lord. Make me, Lord. I just sense that there are some people here who right now just need to be saying to God, God, forgive me because I've been that resistant son. I've been that prodigal son. I may not even have shown it. On the outside, I was perfect. I, 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 I did everything right. But there were things in me that were just walls, walls, walls. They've been walls. But Lord, I want you to make me. Father, I thank you because right now you're making sons. <laughs> you're making sons. You're making daughters. You're making people who are going to glorify you on this earth. That Father God, there's something new you're doing in this house. And that Father God, you're raising up a generation of people who will glorify you. I thank you, Lord, that you are making I see people even in, in the watch parties who are watching online that right now you're making a son, you're making a daughter, that from today something will be different. Lord Jesus, you've promised us some great and precious promises. But the thing that you're putting on my heart is that these are not promises for the end of the year. They start now. That you will be experiencing these things throughout this whole year and beyond. And I believe that the Lord is saying he's drawing us to himself. He's saying, I want you to be a son. Some of us have never had a father. We didn't grow up with a father. We grew up with a harsh father. And so it's just a hard thing right now. But come on, just speak to the father. Say, show me, Lord. Show me how to follow a father. Show me how to follow a mother. I want to be that person. Make me. And Jesus, I thank you because you're in this house and you're doing it. You're in this house and you're doing it. I thank you that you're restoring 
sons to sonship. And you're restoring daughters to daughtership. This is the word of the Lord right now. You are my son whom I love. In you I am well pleased. You don't earn sonship, it is given. You're my daughter whom I love in whom I am well pleased. This is your heavenly father speaking to you right now. You may be struggling right now. Maybe you haven't got your act together yet and that's okay. But you are the son and the daughter in whom the heavenly father rejoices. And so receive his blessing right now. Father, I speak your blessing upon your children. I speak your inheritance upon your children. I speak that Lord Jesus, something so dramatically different is going to happen in these next four days that people will not recognize some of the people in this house. I declare even their countenance is about to change. Some of you are going to change and look so different that it will be visible. There will be a visible change. This week, there will be a visible change. You will leave this mountain, this place here, and you will go back and people will say, there's something different about you. There's something different. Something has shifted. I bless you, Lord, because this is your word right now for your children. We thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody, just receive that word. Receive the word. Just say, thank you, Lord, that you affirm me. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. Thank you that I don't have to earn it. <laughs> I, don't have to, I don't have to do things for you to love me, to affirm me. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. And so, Father, I just want to thank you so much for what you're doing in this house. I can't believe we're just beginning. This is just the first session. Already things are shifting. I can feel the atmosphere is shifting. Something is changing in our compass. Something is changing in our home. I sense it and it's just the first talk. Come on, somebody give glory to Jesus right now. We thank you, Lord. And then somebody help me appreciate my son, Pastor Kevin Kilonzi. Woo! <laughs> Pastor Kev, Pastor Faith, I just want to say we're so proud of you. Uh, this morning, Pastor Kara and I have just been looking at each other and saying, my God, look at these guys. Yeah, you're going to be greater than us. Yeah, you will do greater things than us. Uh, you will go farther than we are able to go. Yeah, we are so great. We are going to be known as your parents, not the other way around. And we can't wait to see. Anybody under your leadership is blessed. Greatly, greatly. And that's true of every other pastor who's in front here. Guys, we are blessed people. We are a blessed people. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? God has given us such amazing leaders in this house. Uh, we are just beginning. The world has yet to see what God is going to do through the yielded people of this family. And so I bless you. I really bless you. Uh, all those blessings you've said, they are yours in double measure. You have not even begun to see. You have not even started your ministry yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That international ministry you're speaking about, it's not even begun. Yeah. Pastor Milton, even you have an international ministry. <laughs> Pastor Milton. Pastor Milton has resisted international ministry. He says, me, I just want to be pastor in Kenya. No, Pastor Milton. You and Pastor Vivian, it is yours. You cannot be in this house and be local. It's not, it's not you. That's not you. That's not you. Yeah, that, because you're part of this house, those blessings are yours. I want to just do a very simple thing before we break for tea. I want to introduce a, a, a spiritual daughter who many of you may not know. Pastor Angie, if you just come up. Uh, this is Pastor Angie Murenga. Come on, just come on. Give her a big Mavuno welcome. So, Pastor Angie is... Um, huh, yeah. She, she's my daughter. And... Um, in the very, in the very, was it the first or the second Mizizi class? I can't remember. It was one of those ones. Um, and she was, um, she was in that class. Mizizi as a church. You're, oh, you're in that one, huh? In the South, at the South Sea Sports Club. Yes. Ten weeks in February. In February. Yes. And you are also, uh, she was one of the very early people who moved from uh, Nairobi Chapel with me, along with some of the the oldies who are in this place, I can see them. Yeah, she, was there, the she was there. And uh, she's been my daughter since then. She came and served at Mavuno Church, uh, did the internship, and then the Lord just led her on a journey. And she went and served in different ministries and uh, has impacted many, many, many people. 
Uh, she has an incredible ministry. Uh, she has a, a podcast called Just Angie. Yeah. And um, this last January, uh, this is just a couple of weeks ago, she planted uh, Mavuno Marketplace. Yeah. And it's a global movement of churches. So she just began a global movement of churches. And she, is, um, she came to me and said, as I start this, I see that this will be a movement under the movement of Mavuno Church. And so I just want to introduce your, this is your sister, this is your mother, she is part of this ministry. And so when you see her, she's one of your pastors, she's one of your leaders, and she has authority in this house. She's not somebody just coming in from the outside. She's been part of this house, she was a child of this house, she, many of the older ones know her very well. And so when you see her, she's not a stranger. When you hear me talk about Pastor Angie, there are two, there's another Pastor Angie who was good friends with her as well. And so Pastor Angie, just, just say something as well. Oh, wow, this is such an honor and such a privilege. And Pastor Kilonzi and Pastor Faith, I am so blessed. That word, you know, when you listen to the word of God, it, look, it feels like it's fresh, like it's new. And you just brought another aspect of it. I've taken notes, I have actions that I need to take and... I'm really grateful for, for both of your um, teachings. So I'm back. One of the things I was like, oh my goodness, he didn't just go there. One of the things that God has been speaking to me about is, I'm, I'm going to say it, but I'm going to qualify it. I'm a prodigal son, but I'm, I didn't waste my inheritance. Mm. I've been on a journey, but in September last year, um, I think I was in the U.S., and the Lord spoke to me, and he spoke to me about my father. And he said, Pastor M is your father. And he asked me a few questions. He said, when I needed someone to bury my father, I called Pastor M. When I needed someone to marry my daughter, I called Pastor M. And God said, what, what, who led me to salvation? He said, a father of salvation. Pastor M. Who discipled me? part of the Mavuno Discovery Program and just serving in the church a long time ago. I think it was 2007, yeah. Pastor M. And so I've been on a journey and I'm a prodigal son coming home. And that was very clear. Go back home, you know? And sometimes it's hard because they're like, what do you mean? I'm moving and shaking the world. Where am I going? And God said, go back to your son. Go, go back to your father. Go back, submit. Because now... There are many lessons. I'm still not quite sure what the 16-year process was about because it's been 16 years. But I, it was learning different things that I can now come, submit. And you know, one thing he said, because in that journey I've had many fathers, and one of the meetings that we had, he said, he said, you know, fathers are for life. Yeah. And many people had told me that, but I never felt it. But for this time when he said it, I even said it. I said, Pastor M, forever feels right. Amen. So I'm here. Um, I don't know what I can say, but I think I can because, you know. The other thing is as the prodigal son, because I'm coming home as a prodigal son, please, older brothers, have mercy in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know, the, I told, and I told him. I said, you know, Pastor him, I'm older and wiser. I'm going to be 57 this year. Yeah. And so, yeah, thank you. So I was like, you know, the older brother is there. Whether we like it or not. Yeah. The older brother is like, and who do you think you are? You can just come waltzing in, sit in the front row, jump up on the stage. Who are you? Have ma? <laughs> the prodigal daughter, his son, is back home. Hallelujah. Amen. I've Amen. done Amen. full circle and I'm home. Amen. And I'm Amen. so blessed to be home. Amen. And I'm Amen. so blessed to really, really, on a serious note, Pastor Moedi and Pastor Carol, to call you my father Amen. and my mother, and I'm really, really grateful. Wow. So I'm wow. back home, I'm here to learn, I'm here to listen, I'm here to obey, I'm here to share what I can, Amen. but I'm here to be part of the family by fire or by force. Amen? <laughs> by fire or by force, I'm here. Amen. Amen. Let me and just say that so Pastor much. Angie has a strong anointing for Marketplace Ministry. And she has impacted many, many professional people. That's, that's a place God has called her to, to reach unchurched people who are in the marketplace. And so we're very excited to have this uh, relationship. I'm so excited about this woman of God. 
Uh, she's highly anointed. I know you're going to be hearing from her uh, in time. And so I just wanted to say welcome home. Welcome home. You know, God told me at the beginning of last year that sons are going to start coming back home. Yeah. And so I really do sense God is going to bring many prodigal sons because God is in, is in the business of fatherhood. And so welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray for tea. Father, thank you so much as we have our tea now. I just pray that, Lord, our hearts would resonate. Our hearts would resonate with this word that we've received from Papa Kilonzi. That, Father God, we would have heard our Father's word. And we would not resist that word. It would find fertile soil. And, Lord, I'm praying that the word that has been sowed today would bear fruit a hundred times. A hundredfold. And many people would come back to Pastor Kevin Kilonzi in years to come and say, the day that message was preached, my life changed. Something completely changed. Even in my relationship with God, something completely changed. I pray for your servant that, Lord, as he has blessed us, you will replenish him, replenish any virtue that has left him. And I pray that, Lord, you would bless him uh, completely. Lord, protect him from any backlash from that word. And I pray that, Father God, you would just allow his house to always overflow with blessing. Uh, thank you because he's fed us. Now you replenish him. And I pray that, Lord, he would find many divine helpers, many divine helpers in the vision you're calling him to, even in this house. And so we bless him now. And Lord, we thank you for tea now as well. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.